I, I wanted to tell you about my um, spaceship dream. Okay. All right. So, and um, I, I think a picture tells a thousand words. So I'll kind of tell you the dream and then I'll show it to you because I want to, I want to be sparse with my words here. So uh, what I saw was a, um, I'm like standing on a beach and maybe 200 feet in on the disc from the shore. And at the shore is a rubber raft and it has like a, a house to it. Like, like you could fit four people in it, but it was like a, a little shelter. Like you could get all the way into. Like and a tiny like, houseboat. houseboat. It's like a little tiny rubber raft houseboat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and it it um it, it rises up into the air and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And it turns into I don't know if you can see this. So You've got me standing on the shore there looking at the little rubber raft, which is now turned into this great big bright thing in the sky. You see the curvature of the earth? Mm -hmm. That's a big so spaceship. So it was, it was huge, huge, huge. And it hangs there in like at the, at the edge of the atmosphere. And then it comes back and it was, it, it went so incredibly fast and it was so bright and it was so brilliant instead of the yellow you saw there, which I used to kind of, kind of show it off. It was like just the purest, brightest white light. And then it comes back down, lands back where it was, two people disembark and then I'm next. <laughs> And so I go and I, I get into the into the the rubber spaceship craft, and there's two pilots in there, and there's a, um, you know, like their their console, like you would see in a in a pilot's cockpit, and they're just all jazzed about taking these people up to the edge of space and back, and then. That was the end of that part of the dream. So to me, it was setting me up for what I was about to see next, which I just kind of blew me away. I saw some friends of mine from back in Texas. One's a, his, a minister and his wife. And I, this is the really, really wild part. Um, my friend, Charlie, I'm going to call him Charlie and LaVon. I asked, uh, Charlie, if I could share his, the stream about him. Anyways, he was sitting bent over with his head in his hands in a gut crunch. This is like a tough army guy. He's retired army. And then he went to the post office and retired from the post office. And we, we would go to his house. He would come to our house. We hung out. We sat together in church. We did everything together because he he was he was like a lay minister, but he had he was ordained. And he found me in the colonnade one day and he says, Hey, I've seen you in this church for a long time now. I need you to come in here and help pray for these people. So I went in there and we got to know each other and we're friends and all that for years and years. And then I moved to Florida and I had this dream. This was on this all happened on April the 19th. And I saw Charlie sitting in the chair, bent over with his elbows on his knees, bent over in the head, head in his hands in a gut crunch. And I saw LaVon in a chair like a, uh, like a lounge chair with a blanket on her laying back in the chair crying. And I'm thinking, oh, dear goodness. So I got in touch with Charlie and uh, sent, sent an email. And he called me back two days later. I said, I had a dream about you and LaVon. And 
I didn't ask about how they were doing nothing. I said, I just want to tell you the dream first before we talk or anything. So I told him that I saw him in a gut crunch, really in pain, and Levon crying in a chair. And he just lost it. He just lost it. So I knew God was giving me a revelation about something. I just didn't know what it was. I thought, gosh, they're in trouble. There's something going on. And he said, on November 30th, Levon passed away. And um, my tough little minister friend was just, he just lost it. He was, uh, you know, wouldn't. I don't know how to describe it. I said, you know, Larry, you're the type that doesn't cry easily. You're a tough army sergeant and, you know, was re really, uh, really a great uh, Bible teacher and all of that. But uh, he says, well, let me tell you what happened. She was in the hospital for 45 days. Oh. And on November 30th, she died. And um, I, I was just shocked. I was shocked. Died from COVID is what he said. Oh. And um, I said, well, Larry, this, I, I felt the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit all over me. And I said, listen, uh, Charlie, God sees your pain. Oh, man, he just, he just lost it. I said, the Lord wants you to know that he's seen it all. He's with you. He's not done with you. And he has seen the beginning from the end and a few other things, but I knew that God was giving me a revelation about what was going on there. And he, within two days, it was like, that meant more to me then um, so many people, when you're a, a, a minister and you're in a big church, a lot of people know who you are and everybody comes up and they don't really quite know what to say, but God wanted him to know. And he, I mean, I think he wants everyone to know that he sees your pain. And I've been through that. I know others have been through that. A lot of people have been through that. And he sees your pain and he comforts those that mourn. So I, I just wanted to share that dream. I think the, the space, I don't know why I had those two dreams, like boom, boom, just like that. But, um, I just, uh, if that ministers to anybody, he sees, he sees you and he loves you and he cares about you. And he wants you to know that he mm -hmm. is ready, willing, and able to comfort you at any time. Wow. Mm. So that doesn't need much of an interpretation there. Well, I tell you, I'm fully convinced that every dream is from God. And I really grabbed onto that when you first taught that. And I, it was kind of surprising to me because I thought, you know, maybe some of my dreams weren't from God. And then you went through the 21 dreams in the Bible and had different people on and I'm fully convinced. And so I didn't hesitate to shoot off an email and let him know um, that I'd had this dream and him being a godly man. He, I think he probably felt there was something to that as well. Wow. Isn't God good? That's amazing. It is amazing. And pay attention to every one of my dreams. Some of them are still like they, as soon as I wake up, they're gone. But whenever I get such a vivid dream like that, I mean, that incredible spaceship thing going up into the heaven, like a portal opened and gave me revelation. Mm. And it's still get. I mean, giving me revelation. Wow. That is awesome. You know, a lot of times God will give uh, 
I've heard of people that have been like almost up in the corner of a room and hearing a conversation at a restaurant um, that was about them. And they were surprised that coworkers were talking or gossiping about them. And um, I had uh, a family member um, when we were in high school that <clears throat> saw a friend of ours from school um, kind of get pushed and fall down. And um, when they went to when we went to school the next day, she approached this person and said, hey, did, did something happen? And he was like, yeah, I got in a fight with my dad last night. You know, mm -hmm. it was just the whole idea of, you know, God, you, you never know what people can see. That's why it's interesting hanging out with a group of people like us that do spiritual intelligence, because God, God will show people things that they need to know, whether it's a low point and, and somebody needs comforting or um, it's words that somebody is speaking about you. Like if you ask, if you press in and you ask God, we call we call it an RFI, which is a military term that Neil taught us, the general who taught us about a request for intelligence. You know, if you're going to go on a mission, you need intelligence for certain things. And so you put it a request. Hey, I need to know, you know, where, where the enemy is at and what's this and what's that and topographical maps and this. And here's the information I need to go do my job. So the same thing in life. God has commissioned all of us, you know, to be his hands and feet in the world and to go disciple nations. And we need information. We need intelligence. So we can put requests for information. And if you don't have the revelation that I have, that we have, that Hadassah now has, that all dreams come from God. Begin to ask for requests for intelligence because I tell you what, nothing will make, I can tell you all day long stories. We can go through every dream in the Bible, which by the way, we're, we're, we're filming, currently filming the new, brand new dreams through the Bible study series. It's going to be so much better. It's going to be in high depth. It's, just, it, it's anyway, stay tuned because that's coming and it's going to be absolutely amazing. We're investing quite a bit in that quality product with that for you. Um, <clears throat> But we can talk about that all day, and I can tell you nightmare after nightmare after nightmare after nightmare that we've interpreted and how they were profound messages from God. But what people really want to know that are doubters as to whether dreams come from God or not is they want to experience it in their own life. So ask them. Ask him to meet you in your dreams. Ask him to show you something. Ask about you meet a new friend and say, God, who is this person? You know, a business partner or a new dating relationship or somebody that just came into your life or your new pastor and say, God, I need to know about this person. Can I trust them? Who are they to me? What is my assignment with them? And it, it, it's almost unfair because it's like a background check. And God will show you. God will absolutely show you about people. But he'll also show you about situations. Again, watch the Dream Talk series. We've had people say, God, I want a house. And God showed them a house exactly what, like what they wanted, showed them what to offer, which was more than asking price, and showed them on the day that the offer would be accepted, which was Christmas Day. And in the dream, they had presents and a tree in the corner. Like God will give you so much intelligence and information if you just step out and ask him. And it's beautiful that God will use that to be able to comfort a friend of Hadassah's and let her see a window into his pain so that he could go to her and not just say, God sees you, but say, God sees you because here's what I saw in my dream the other day. And of course the guy lost it because he knows for a fact that he was in that position and that's what happened. And so there's nothing like the intelligence that comes from heaven to move a heart, to help restore a relationship, to give you intelligence that you need for the real world and actionable intelligence for your life. And it's straight from the heart of God. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm.